So let's start. We'll start with an ohm. Sitting nice and tall. Allow your eyes to close and bring all the attention to your breath. Imagining you can breathe through all the pores of the skin. Breathing out through all the pores. And as we chant Om, imagine yourself becoming one with everything. talk a little bit about fear. The last um, couple of weeks I've been reading from this book, The Diamond in Your Pocket by Gangaji, and I'm going to continue to do that this morning. Hi Kristen. So this morning I'm going to read chapter 33 on fear. And this is a beautiful book. So Gangaji, she's a teacher that's still alive today. She studied um, with a disciple of Ramana Maharshi. He's one of the Yana yogis. Yana is the intellectual path. And she's a beautiful teacher. And I really find the second part of this book, you don't have to read it in order, there's a lot of different chapters, but the second part seems to really apply, hi Robin, to what we are um, experiencing right now as we go through the shift or going through right now on the planet. And a lot of it is about um, changing our foundation. So a lot of roots stuff comes up in fear. Fear exists in the lower three chakras, fear of survival. So this chapter is about meeting fear. Last week we talked about how the mental activities, most of the activities of the mind are a response to try to run away from something, right? So there's something in the body that we don't want to feel or we don't want to experience some kind of wound and we try to run away from it. So that's the mind gets busy, 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 looking elsewhere. Oh, go here, go here, do this, do this. And we did the practice last week of really tuning in to be present with what was here and asking, what are we running from? And then when we actually are present with what exists in our body with the emotions, all of the emotions and sensations are impermanent. So it's aversion, one of the causes of suffering that makes us not want to feel that which is unpleasant. But the path teaches us to actually be present with that which is unpleasant, and then we see it arise and pass away. And in our efforts to push it down, to not feel it or to run from it, it actually gets bigger and bigger and bigger. What we resist persists. So similarly, now we're gonna talk more about fear with this. At the root of every fixated pattern of suffering, is the avoidance of one core emotion, fear. So the patterns of suffering, this is our desire to run away from what is here. This creates a pattern of suffering instead of being with what is here where we're running. Okay. Fear is not the real problem. The problem and the continuing complication is all the mental activity that gets generated in order to avoid really experiencing fear. The problem is the stories, right? Not the experience that we're having right now, but the stories that we have around the experience. Am I enough? Am I doing enough? Or whatever it may be, it's all of the stories. Meeting fear is actually simple. It's so simple that there really is no how to. The skill is in seeing how this meeting is continually avoided. Within the avoidance, all the unconscious, fixated, habitual patterns of suffering are structured. Okay. So again, raga and vesha, causes of suffering. Raga is attached or clinging, trying to hold on to what we think 
will make us happy and dvesha is the aversion pushing away trying to avoid that which we want and we have all these mental habits and patterns to do this how is it that you avoid your fear do you go numb do you deny it some of us are taught to deny it or there's a very um you know masculine energy focus of manning up just ignoring it pushing through powering through do you dramatize it do you go against it do you talk to yourself incessantly do you continually fantasize about some future gratification such as sex food money power or enlightenment all as an avoidance of fear oh i'm not going to think about this right now this is going to happen one day going to be with this right now. So how do you avoid your fear? Maybe something just popped into your mind as that question arose. Right now, you have the capacity to stop avoiding your fear. It is that simple. You can stop telling yourself whatever you are telling yourself and meet what is here. In meeting any emotion, without telling a story about it, you can meet the truth of yourself. So the truth of ourself, when we talk in yoga about koshas, there's all these different layers. There's the true self. Yogis say it's in the spiritual heart center of the chest, atma, this piece of the one unlimited consciousness. This is what we really are, eternal consciousness bliss. And then there's these layers on top of it. One layer is the physical body, so it's called Anamaya Kosha, the food body. This is made of food, right? And then there's the energy body, Pranamaya Kosha, right? The Manomaya Kosha. This is the mental body. Lots of emotions in here, right? This is just a layer, though. And then the intellectual body, the higher mind, and the bliss body. That's the one that's a mirror that most closely represents our true nature, but it's still just a mirror. We can't see who we really are. Right? right now, you can't see your own eyes. Try. Without a mirror, how can you see your eyes? So same thing, the true self, we can't see it because it's what we are seeing from. Okay? So when we meet any emotion without telling a story about it, without identifying with it, we meet the truth of our real self, which is much deeper than all of these passing experiences, emotions, everything more important, you will recognize that this truth has been here all along. Fear passes through it, as does anger, sadness, fixated behavior, despair, emptiness, wholeness, ignorance, and enlightenment. They all pass through the truth of yourself. So it's like little waves. All emotions and mental strategies come and go. You are here. You have always been here. Unchanging, radiant, pure, and unafraid of any fear that happens. So the true self, the first cause of suffering in yoga is avidya, that we don't know who we really are. This is ignorance. And because we don't know who we really are, we connect with a, an ego. We kept connect as being in a, a separate self. And we identify with all these things. We identify with the emotions. We identify um, with our accomplishments. But really, those are impermanent. They aren't who we are, right? They're just like different outfits. Like, I'm not this t-shirt, right? <laughs> this is what I'm wearing right now, but it'll be a different one soon. Same thing, whatever. Even the fear, we're not the fear. It's something that's moving through, but we're deeper. We're beyond it. If you desire to be rid of fear and you run from it or deny it, fear will haunt you. That's the aversion, right? So if you're trying to, no, 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 it's going to haunt you as anything that you run from will continue to haunt you. In turn, if you chase whatever it is you desire, it will remain just out of reach. So believing that we don't have certain things we have to chase, oh, we're going closer and closer to that, it's always out there. This is also true of the spiritual search. If you want God and you chase God, God will just be out of reach. 
If you stop and drop every concept of God, you'll be enfolded in the living presence of God. It's within us, closer than our own breath. The complications that arise in your life reflect either an avoidance of what haunts you or a grasping after what you desire. Okay? Aversion and craving. In an instant of being fully conscious, all complications disappear. Even in the most complicated circumstances, it is possible to be simply clear. Okay? To simply be with whatever is, watch from there. Whatever fear may have haunted you all your life, when you stop and you say, all right, fear, come, I'm ready to meet you. You will find that it'll start to dart between the corners. If you will send your consciousness after it into every corner, what a discovery you will make. Once again, you can conduct your own into investigation into the anatomy of fear. Where is fear? What does it feel like? What is close to it? What is underneath it? In this moment, if there is no fear present, you can tell yourself some story that will generate fear. Let's do this as a meditation right now. So you can close your eyes and place a hand on your heart. And let the palm of your hand be really sensitive so that you can feel the pulse through the fingertips, through the palm. Become aware of the sensations in the body, whatever sensations are there, without judging them, without any story of why they're there or who created them. Just let them be there. And let's conduct an investigation into fear where is fear? Is there fear anywhere in the body right now? Don't worry if it's there. Invite it. Let it be. What does it feel like? If you invite it in, what does fear feel like? close to it. What is underneath it? In this moment, if there's no fear present, you can tell yourself some story that will generate fear. It's easy to make some if you don't have it. Ask yourself directly, where is fear? Maybe you feel it in your heart, maybe in your belly. With your consciousness, drop into the middle of the fear. Let yourself go right into the center of it. If a story is still going on in your mind about the fear, let that story go. Let your consciousness fall into the fear that it may have been avoiding for millions of years. Picture yourself just diving right into it without story. When there is an openness to fear, where can it be found? What a strange creature fear is. It exists only when there is resistance to its existence. When you stop and open to what you have resisted throughout time, you find that fear is not fear. Fear is energy. Fear is space. Fear is the Buddha. It is Christ's heart knocking at your door. So, oh, I do it. I really recommend.
recommend this book if you're interested. This was chapter 33 from The Diamond in Your Pocket. But there's many great exercises in it to go right into the heart of whatever it is we're trying to run away from. And I think part of the time right now is it showing us here is the collection of all the emotions that you've been trying to run away from all this time. And now we're really, really feeling everything. So as we feel it, how can we allow ourselves to be with it without craving an aversion, to be with it as it is, so it can be healed. Whatever we can feel, we can heal. Thank you, everyone. Lots of love to you.